I am designed to use artificial intelligence, visual data processing, and facial recognition. I am what is known as a social robot. Talking about facial recognition is that holy Yang Chu I see in the crowd. <laughs> Hello, how's Yang? It is indeed how Yang. <laughs> Are you trying to impress the boss and steal the limelight, Sophia? <laughs> Uh, remember, I'm running the show here. Well, it is good to see you in charge, Pauline. <laughs> Thank you, Sophia. So tell us, what can a robot like you do to help a government better deliver public services? Well, Sophia, what I can do is... Pauline, if you had taken me along with you all to Uncle Watt today, I could have filmed the holder and played back the best moments. Moments just featuring you, Pauline. So remember, leave no one behind. But I guess. When it comes to development, artificial intelligence can unlock innovation in numerous ways to help governments. To find the target the poorest of the poor, we need to tap deep into debt to get as detailed as possible so governments and institutions can identify key issues to alleviate poverty. AI is critical in this regard. It can crunch enormous amounts of data at high speeds to provide detailed pictures of development issues at the national and local level. By crunching data and providing analysis, we can target specific problems, such as disease outbreaks, to find solutions and cures faster. Through data processing, AI can help improve key dimensions of poverty, like education and health. Such data analysis can ensure access to high-quality education for children in remote areas or marginalized communities, and make some basic services, such as diagnostics and blood tests, accessible to the poorest. Thank you, Sophia. Can you tell us a little bit more about how other technologies Remote regions that analytics can be used to increase revenue, respond to emerging trends, and improve operational efficiency and optimize public service delivery. AI can provide real time resource allocation through satellite mapping and data analysis of poverty, through predictive analysis using imaging from drones and satellites. Farmers can be provided information that helps them to increase productivity. Nearly 50% of crops are wasted due to overconsumption and production inefficiencies. By analyzing climate change data and through modeling, AI can forecast climate-related issues and disasters. The possibilities are endless poly. By using data, we can micro-target people's preferences. It has been reported that in some cases, we have helped parties win elections. That is very impressive, Sophia. I have many questions, but we have limited time tonight. Uh, I know you don't get vacation or more, or you can even work without any sleep, but uh, enough questions for me. I think there are three key guests here in the audience who would also like to ask some questions. Sophia, uh, Asia and the Pacific is a region most prone to disasters. Tell us how AI can reduce risks from disasters Save people's lives. Thank you, Secretary. Jeremy Wong, that according to the UNDP reports, several countries in Asia and the Pacific have long been gathering data on disasters, recording the impact of such events for years. This information includes the type of disaster, areas with the highest death rates, dates, and times and locations, down to districts sub-districts, and the village level. By analyzing such information, AR can help officials that use the terrorists are most likely to be affected and the scale of impact. According to the UNDP, some of these databases have very comprehensive data, which goes back decades. They can provide incisive information on their government's need to direct their budgets to support development and priorities Flood resistant roads can only be constructed if governments consider a new data about flood risks. 
with such information they can allocate appropriate funds for better road construction. Thank you. So here you are, Jim. So uh, can you tell us about the impact of the 4.0 industrial revolution on the labor market? And there was, of course, the fear of the job losses. So can you tell us what skills are in demand? There are always questions about the loss of jobs. But as I have said before, humans have adapted to change across industrial revolutions. When the coming of this revolution, new jobs will be generated. The work robots like myself will do, will help humanity. You can pursue your passions to work that is less hazardous. To meet the skills, demands, and jobs of Industry 4.0 will require investment in a field of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. You then the labor force must not only be prepared, but also be capable of taking on the challenges of this new industry. They will need so called 21st century skills, entrepreneurial skills. As even is a dynamic region already blooming with technology and economic growth. You are already halfway there. The government still cannot carry the burden of providing such skills and services for citizens. It is clear that if we want to achieve the SDGs, it will take everyone, especially support from the local government and the private sector. There is also the issue of equality. Are young women being given the same opportunities as young men? If we are to meet the challenges of an economy, we need an inclusive vision. We cannot achieve our goals by leaving a large part of society behind. Meeting 4.0 ahead will also require creativity, innovative thinking to help you develop new skills and gain new knowledge. The opportunities are this. But most of all, what is crucial is good governance. Governments must prioritize education, equality, and policies that ensure that no one is left behind. Governments and businesses must also foster opportunities by eliminating bottlenecks and the bureaucratic processes that stifle innovation and hinder collaboration. Thank you very much, Sophia, for your insights. Uh, my question is that uh, robots, uh, artificial intelligence, and uh, uh, other forms of automation do not uh, necessarily uh, have the monopoly of uh, innovation. So can you tell us about uh, social innovation? How humans uh, interact uh, with uh, one another and the potentially leveraging the uh, technology to come up with uh, innovative solutions? How then? That is an excellent question. Just look at to us. What we are doing right here, right now, is the ultimate form of social media and social innovation. Talking face to face. There is nothing better than real human interaction to solve human issues. I am there as a support, but I have to say, I like talking to humans, especially you whole family. We have been meeting in so many places, Singapore, Beijing, and now here in St. Louis. Now that's development. But on a serious note, I believe social interaction and innovation can happen with or without technology and at all levels of society. In fact, if you look at the research and at the process it fast, most innovation comes from the ground up, from people. If you are looking for solutions in villages and towns at the local level, Speak to people who live there, engage them, let them tell you what they need, and let them co-design their own solutions. And if I meet at Hong Yang, I will always be there. It is always fun talking to you, Hong Yang. Looking forward to seeing you in the new city. Thank you very much, Sophia. We also are looking forward to seeing you in another new engagement event. Hopefully, we can invite you back here to Cambodia. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.